day 703 being Christopher Cruz. So um, this morning when I woke up, I was like half asleep, half awake. I saw like, uh, I got like an email from Venmo. Someone sent me a hundred dollars. I was like, what? And uh, But I was like, I had to get up and like get ready. And so I just looked at the email uh, a little bit ago and one of my very good friends and uh, one of my coaching clients, she uh, sent me $100 on Venmo. And in the comments, uh, it said, I know rent is paid, but oh my God, do you have enough money for food? Are you still eating? Um, let me know if you need more, I love you. And it was just like, just makes me feel so grateful. Like there are, there are people in my life that I am so lucky to have. Like people in my life that that it's just like they're my soul family. You know, it's like you just meet some people and you just know like <laughs> if you were, you know, if you had a family in heaven, like they would be a part of it. And she is definitely one of them. And it's so funny because when we started coaching, like I pissed her off several times. Um <laughs> and then we just became amazing friends. And it's like one of those friendships where it's like we don't talk very much, but it's like we don't need to, you know, we still love each other so much and it's like, we're brother and sister. And, um, but that's like, that's on me. Like I, I just am a horrible, I do a really bad job at maintaining friendships. Like I just, I've just always been like that. Like I just, not because people don't matter to me. Um, people are like the most important thing to me, uh, other than God, but it's like, I just, I'm just not good at it you know I'm not good at staying in contact with people like anyone in my family can tell you that any friends can tell you that like I just don't do a very good job and so you know she's one of those people where I consider her to be you know one of my closest friends and best friends but I like rarely talk to her and that is that is my own fault and uh I need to like I have I have so many good people in my life like so many so many amazing souls that care about me and love me and it was just like just for her to do that it was like and it's not even the dollar amount it could have been five dollars you know it's it's the the love that was behind it and the caring that's behind it and it just really made me see like i have some amazing incredible people in my life and i need to do a better job at staying in communication with them so but it was just like just seeing that i was like like not only does God have my back, but good people um, have my back too. And so there's nothing to worry about at all. So this is, this is great. <laughs> this is awesome. And the crazy thing is, you know, if I were to not be trusting God right now, and if I were to be full of anxiety and stress and worry and doubt, I guarantee I would not have gotten the inspiration that I just got for for uh, the whole warrior thing. Um, I wouldn't be able to be so grateful for my friend sending that money, like, it's just, yeah. It's interesting how lack can make you more grateful, how lack can make you appreciate more of what you have, like, I appreciate the $58 that's in my account. I'm very grateful for it. And her sending me a hundred is like, wow, she just tripled my net worth. Like, I'm so grateful for that, you know? And it's like, maybe God is trying to teach me like, hey, be grateful for the little that you have so that I can send you a lot. But I also think he's trying to teach me like, hey, Chris, steward the little that you have so I can trust you with a lot. Like manage the little bit of money that you have so I can trust you with a lot of money. And, um, you know, I was doing that a few months ago when I started selling my purpose course. You know, 10% would go back to pay, would go to pay a debt. 10% would go to, to give away for, to someone. 10% would go um, towards investing in something. And then 10% would go to myself to buy myself something nice. And I was doing that like religiously and it was, it was awesome. I felt really good, you know. It'd be like 10 bucks here, 10 bucks there, 10 bucks there every time I sold a purpose course. And then I kind of fell away from that. And uh, I want to get back to that. So tonight when I get home, I'm going to do the budget and really, um, really stick to it. And it's interesting because we're reading Genesis right now with our head pastor. 
and uh, someone asked a question about tithing and you know the the part that we we're reading is Cain and Abel which were the the first sons of Adam and Eve and they were talking about the what they gave to God and um, Abel gave God like the first you know born sheep or whatever it was or lamb it was like the prize lamb you know it was like and he sacrificed that for God and then Abel gave him like some leftover fruit basically and uh or no a a Cain gave him the leftover fruit or whatever it was and God wasn't pleased with that and and so our pastor was talking about like God wants the first fruits God wants you know you to to give him the best and to sacrifice and then he talked about uh someone asked about tithing you know you give your first 10 percent. you don't give your last 10 percent. you give your first 10 percent um to show God like you know your gratitude and really your trust in him like I trust you with with this and and um so he was talking about that and and then our pastor said um and he wasn't like pushing like tithing or like you guys need to tithe or whatever it was just you know part of the the part of the bible that we're reading and people have questions about that you know um it's like does it say to tithe in the bible you know that kind of stuff because i think a lot of our minds just go to the negative like no nah, i don't trust i'm not gonna give the church 10 percent of my money like i'm not gonna pay my pastors like car payment you know whatever we just have those thoughts and um and so he said something he was that was interesting that caught my attention he said you know if you're one of those people where you feel like you got holes in your pockets and it doesn't matter how much money you make before long it's all gone and you don't have anything left he said try committing your finances to god give the first 10 percent and just see what happens even if it's five dollars you know even if it's five dollars do what you can and see what happens because what you're really doing is you're making a statement of trust to God um, that you trust him with your money and if you really think about it like you only have to give 10% then you get to keep the 90% you make $10 you get, only have to give away a dollar and you keep the nine dollars and um, yeah so I need to make that a priority because for me what it really is like it doesn't matter to me what a church says or what a pastor says what it is to me when I tithe it is me trusting God it's me you know saying you know what God I, I trust that you're gonna provide it's a statement of abundance you know it's a statement of I don't need to hold on to this because I know you're gonna bring more I don't have to latch on to it because I know you're gonna bring more and um, when I was doing that God brought me a lot more and then I and then I I stopped because the because it got high <laughs> the dollar amount got high I remember the last time I tithed or um, the time before last right I brought on all these clients and I I tithed I think three hundred dollars or four hundred dollars and I was like <gasps> like I have to breathe like let me breathe you know because a, a client paid like 35 or, or four. Thirty-five hundred or four thousand dollars, and I was like, "Oh my god!" <laughs> and I remember the fear in that, but I also remember the trust. And then I and I stopped doing it. And so, um, yeah, I wanna I wanna get back to being on that kind of regimen of a budget. Like it made me feel so good. It made me feel so good because I'd never I've never lived like that. I was never taught, you know, how to manage money or understand money which is crazy because I was a financial planner for three years. But all you do when you do that is you sell insurance. You're an insurance salesman, you're not a financial planner. It's just some bullshit title to make you think that, to make people think you're not selling life insurance. <laughs> um, but yeah, I never, I never learned, like, I never, it was never a thing that was taught to me. I saw money come in, I saw money go out and that was it. And and there and that was that was all so it's like I got to teach myself about this and and I was doing that 10 10 10 10 10 and it was amazing I felt good it was like even though I was only investing five bucks you know into the Robin Hood app it was like you know that shoot that added up to like a hundred bucks or something like that over over a few weeks five dollars a time ten dollars a time whatever but it just felt good to know that I was managing it and I was being responsible with it so um yeah i'm gonna do that tonight when i get home but yeah just so grateful for amazing people and her doing that like makes a huge difference not just financially but 
mentally and emotionally like has a huge impact so yeah